In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender to make this image of two pool balls. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.67a. Before we start, make sure that you have the Cycles Render Engine. To do this, come over here to this drop-down menu and verify that one of the selections is Cycles Render. If you don't have it, then you can go to blender.org to download the latest version of Blender. Let's start by creating a new project. So go to the File menu and select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. I'm going to start by expanding this section on the right by dragging the edge. Just in case you're brand new to Blender, I'll quickly cover a few basics. If you want to select an object, then click your right mouse button on it. For example, this is the camera, and I can select it by right-clicking on it. Then to select the cube, just right-click on it. To rotate the view, press and hold the middle mouse button while you drag the mouse. If you press and hold the shift key and then press and hold the middle mouse button, you can pan the view. You can also zoom by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. The default scene starts with a single cube object. We don't need the cube, so we're going to delete it. To do that, right click on the cube to make sure that it's selected, then type X on your keyboard and then select Delete. By the way, if you ever make a mistake and want to undo your last operation, just press Control z Now let's add a sphere. In Blender, when you add an object, it will be added at the location of the 3D cursor. This symbol right here is the 3D cursor. You can move the 3D cursor to a new location by clicking the left mouse button. So to add the sphere, click on the Add menu and select Mesh, and then UV Sphere. Let's zoom in to see this better. Remember, to zoom, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse. Next, we're going to set the material for the sphere. So click on the Material button right here, and then click on the New button. Materials are selected differently when using the Blender Render Engine as compared with the Cycles Render Engine. We want to use the Cycles Render Engine, so come up here and click on this menu, and then select Cycles Render. Now click on the Use Nodes button. Then click here to select the surface type and select Mix Shader. Mix Shader allows us to combine two different shaders. Click here to set the first shader and select Diffuse. Then click here to set the second shader and select Glossy. We want the color of both shaders to be white, so we'll keep the default color values. Down here for the Glossy shader, set the Roughness value to 0. Now set the FAC value to 0.7. This value is what you use to control the proportions of the two different shaders. Now let's give this material a name. To do that, click here and type a name. I'll just call this White. Next we're going to add a blue stripe to the sphere, so click here and select Edit Mode. Then click here and select Wireframe. To make this easier to work with, I'm going to switch to Orthographic Projection. If you look here, you can see that we're currently in Perspective Projection. To switch to Orthographic, click on the View menu and select View Perspective Orthographic. This toggles between the two. Now if you look here, you can see that we're in Orthographic Projection. Now let's view the sphere directly from the front. So click on the View menu. Here we have selections for left, right, back, front, bottom, and top. You'll also notice that there are hotkeys listed for each of these here on the right. It's a good idea to learn some of the hotkeys because they can really be a time saver. Now I want to switch to front view, so I'll click on front. While in edit mode, everything that is selected is highlighted with an orange color. If you press the A key, it will toggle between deselecting everything and selecting everything. We want to deselect everything. Now we're going to select the area where we want to put the blue stripe. So press the B key on the keyboard. This will allow us to select the vertices by drawing a box around them. So position the cursor about right here, and then press and hold the left mouse button and draw a box around these vertices. Then release the button. Now come over here and click on the Material button if it's not already selected. We're going to add a blue material to the selected portion of the sphere. So click this plus button. Now to make it easier, let's just modify the material that we've already made. 
So click this little button here that's next to the new button and select white. Then click this plus button so that we can make a duplicate of the material. Then rename it blue. Now click here to change the color. You can move this dot around to select a color. Or if you want to use the same color that I'm using, then click the hex button and in the entry box type 001E E7. Then do the same for the other color. 001E E7. The colors that we've chosen will be used when we render the image, but these colors will not be displayed while we're editing, but we can set a color that will be displayed during editing. To do this, open up the section called Settings. Then click on the Color button. Then just drag this dot over here to a blue color. This color is not important, so any shade of blue will be fine. Now come up here and press the Assign button. This will assign the blue material to the area of the sphere that we've selected. Now switch from wireframe to solid. And also switch from edit mode to object mode. You'll notice that the sphere is made of multiple flat rectangles, which are called faces. We want the sphere to be a nice smooth surface. So we're going to shrink down the size of the flat faces and then apply smoothing. So to shrink the flat faces, click on the object modifiers button that looks like a wrench. Then click on Add Modifier and select Subdivision Surface. You can see that the size of the rectangle faces are now smaller. Increase this value to 2 and it makes the faces even smaller. Increase it one more time and the faces are very small. Make sure that both the View and Render values are set to 3. The value for View sets what we will see here in this window and the value for Render sets what we'll see in our final rendering. Next, click on the Apply button. Now to finish smoothing the surface, come over here and click on the Smooth button. Now we're going to add another sphere in front of this one. So first switch to Right Side View by clicking on the View menu, and then select Right. This is the front of the sphere over here. Now pan the view to the right. Remember to pan the view, press and hold the Shift key while pressing the middle mouse button. Now we're going to duplicate this sphere, so right click on it to make sure that it's selected, then press Shift-D to duplicate it. Now if you move your mouse, the duplicate sphere moves with it. Now press the Y key to restrict the movement to the Y axis. Then drag the sphere to the left and click the left mouse button after it's in position. We don't need the blue stripe on this sphere, so come over here and click on the Material button. Then left click on the blue material to make sure that it's selected. Then click on this minus button to delete it. Now we're going to scale the sphere, so press the S key. Now when you move your mouse, the sphere will change size. While I'm scaling, I can also enter a value in directly, which is what I'm going to do. So I'll type 0.4 and then I'll press the Enter key. And now I've scaled the sphere down in size. We're going to use this sphere to make the round white circle where the pool ball number is located. So use the green arrow and drag this sphere to the right until it's about in this position. Now you can rotate the view to get a better look. Now we're going to make this small sphere even with the front of the larger sphere. So click on the Object Modifiers button. Then click on Add Modifier and select Boolean. Make sure that the operation value is set to Intersect. Then click in this entry box and select Sphere. Then click the Apply button. This will produce an object that is equal to where the two spheres intersect. You can drag this green arrow to see the new object better. Now zoom in closer for this next step. You may also need to pan the view. Then drag the green arrow and position this object until the front of the object is just a little bit in front of the large sphere. You want it to be as close as possible without letting any of the blue color show through. Now if you look along this edge, you can see that it's not completely smooth. To fix this, click on Add Modifier and select Edge Split. Verify that the checkbox next to Edge Angle is checked and that the split angle is set to 30. Then click on the Apply button. Now go to Front View by clicking on the View menu and then select Front. Then zoom out and pan the view to the left. Next we're going to duplicate both of these objects. 
so right click on the large sphere to select it, then hold down the shift key and right click on the middle object. Holding down the shift key allows you to select multiple objects at the same time. Now press shift D to duplicate the objects. The duplicate objects will now move with the mouse. Press the X key to restrict the movement to the X axis. Move the objects to the right and then press the left mouse button when they are in position. This ball on the right is going to be an 8 ball, so we need to change its color. Right now, the right sphere and the center object are both selected. We only want the sphere to be selected, so right click on it. This will select the sphere and deselect the middle object. Now click on the material button. Then left click here on this blue material to make sure that it's selected. Then click the minus button to remove the blue material. Now we're going to change this white color to black. But first we need to duplicate this white material. If we don't duplicate it, but instead we simply change the color of the white material, then the color will change for every object that uses this material. So all of the white on this other sphere would change too. So to duplicate the white material, click this plus button. Then change the name to black. Now click on this color button and change the color to black. Then click on this color button and change this to a gray color. I'm using 707070. Next, change the FAC value to 0.3. Now come down to the settings section and click on this color button. Set the color to black. Remember that this color is displayed while we are editing. Now would be a good time to save what we have so far. So from the file menu, select Save As. Here you can specify a directory, and this is the file name. I'm going to name this poolballs.blend. Blend is the extension that Blender uses. Then click the Save As Blender File button. Next we're going to add the numbers to the pool balls. So left click down here to set the position of the 3D cursor. Then from the Add menu, select Text. The text is right here, but it's lying down flat. You can rotate the view to see it better. We want the text to be standing up, so press the R key to rotate. Then press the X key to restrict the rotation to the X axis. Then type 90 followed by the Enter key. This will rotate the text by 90 degrees. You can use the green arrow to drag the text to the front. To change the text, click this button and select Edit Mode. Then press the backspace key several times, and then type 10. Then click here and return to object mode. Now click the object data button. We're going to make the text characters a little wider. We do this with the offset value. So set this value to 0 0.015. Now let's add some depth to the text by setting the extrude value. Set this value to 0.3. Let's also change the spacing between the characters. So come down to the paragraph section and set the character value to 0.8. This will move the characters closer together. Now we're going to change the overall size of the text. So press the S key to scale, then type 0.7 followed by the Enter key. Next we're going to set the material for the number. So click on the Material button. We can use the same black material that we used for this sphere. To do that, click on this little button right here and select the black material. Now duplicate this number by pressing Shift D. You can see the duplicate move with the mouse. Press the X key to restrict the movement to the X axis. Move the number to the right and then press the left mouse button. Now go into edit mode to change the number. Press the backspace key a couple of times and then type 8. Now return to object mode. For the next step, we're going to be converting the text into a mesh. To do this, press Alt-C and then select Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text. Now we'll do the same thing for the other text. So right click on the 10 to select it, press Alt-C, and then click here again. Now let's move the text into position. So from the View menu, Select Front, then drag the blue and red arrows to center the 10. Then right click on the 8 to select it, 
Then drag the arrows to center it. Next, rotate the view. Now drag the green arrow and move the text to about this position. The text should be part way inside of the ball. Next, right click on the other text to select it. Drag the green arrow and move the text to here. Now we're going to make the text even with the outside of the ball. To do this, we need to first find out the name of this white sphere. So right click on it to select it. Its name is displayed right here and it's just called Sphere. Now right click on the text to select it. Then click on the Object Modifiers button. Then click Add Modifier and select Boolean. Make sure that the operation value is set to Intersect. Then click in this entry box and select Sphere. Then click the Apply button. Let's zoom in for a closer look. Now drag the green arrow to move the text as close to the white background as possible without letting any of the white show through. To make sure that the edges are smooth, click the Add Modifier button and select Edge Split. Verify that the edge angle is checked and the split angle is 30 degrees. Then press the Apply button. Now let's repeat this for the other text. So first right click on the black sphere to find its name. It's called Sphere 002. Now right click on the text to select it. Then click Add Modifier and select Boolean. Make sure that the operation value is set to Intersect. Then click in this entry box and select Sphere 002. Sometimes when you try to perform the Boolean operation, this will happen. Instead of cutting away the front of the text, the outline of the text will be left behind. Let's zoom in for a closer look. A solution that has worked for me in the past is to resize the text a little bit. So press the S key to scale, then type 1.1 followed by the Enter key. This seems to have fixed the problem, but we can't see the text until we move it out a little. So come over here and click on the Apply button to finish the Boolean operation. Next, drag the green arrow and move the text until it's as close to the white background as possible without letting any of the white show through. Now make sure that the edges are smooth. So click the Add Modifier button and select Edge Split. Verify that the edge angle is checked and the split angle is 30 degrees. Then press the Apply button. Now we're done creating the pool balls. The next thing that we're going to do is to rotate one of the balls. So from the View menu, select Front. Now zoom out. Next, right-click on the number 10 to select it. Then hold down the Shift key and right-click on the center white area to add it to the selection. Then while still holding the Shift key, right-click here to add the large sphere to the selection. Now press the R key to rotate and then type 20 followed by the Enter key. This will rotate it by 20 degrees. Now drag the blue arrow and move the ball until the bottom of the ball is even with the other one on the right. Now from the View menu, select Top. We're now looking down on the pool balls from the top side. We're going to rotate the ball again, so press the R key. Then type 20 followed by the Enter key. Then grab the red arrow and drag the ball to the left a little. Next, let's make a surface for the balls to sit on. Start by switching to Front View. Now click the left mouse button here to set the location of the 3D cursor. Now from the Add menu, select Mesh and then Plane. Then drag the blue arrow up until the plane is just below the bottom of the two pool balls. If you rotate the view now, you can see the plane better. Now we're going to resize the plane. In our final render, we want the plane to look like it's fading into the background. We can do this by making the plane very large. So press the S key to scale, and then type 50 followed by the Enter key. Now let's set the material for the plane. So click on the Material button, then click the New button. We can use the default Diffuse Surface. To set the color, click here. If you want to use the same color that I'm using, then enter 116100. Now we need to add a light source. 
So go to the right side view by clicking on the view menu and select right. Now zoom out. Then position your cursor up here and click the left mouse button to reposition the 3D cursor. Then from the Add menu, select Mesh and then Plane. Then press the R key to rotate and then move your mouse to rotate the plane until it's facing the two pool balls. Then click the left mouse button. Now press the S key to scale and type 5 followed by the Enter key. This will scale up the plane by 5 times. You can rotate the view to get a better look. Next, we need to set the material for this plane. So click on the New button, then click here, and select Emission. This material emits light. The Strength value sets the strength of the light source. Set this value to 15. The default color that's used for the background is a gray color. We're going to change the background color to black. To do that, click on the World button. Then click here and move this slider all the way down to the bottom. Now we're ready to set up the camera view. Start by going to the view menu and select camera. This is the view looking through the camera. What you see looking through the camera is what will be rendered in your final rendering. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. If you want to be able to rotate and pan the view while looking through the camera, then we need to make a change to the view properties. To do this, Click on the View menu and select Properties. Then over here on the right, put a check mark in the box next to Lock Camera to View. Then to hide this menu, click on the View menu and select Properties again. Now you can rotate, zoom, and pan the view while looking through the camera. So now I'm going to position the view to the view that I want to render. Remember to zoom the view, use the scroll wheel. To rotate the view, press and hold the middle mouse button while you move the mouse. And to pan the view, hold down the Shift key and press and hold the middle mouse button while you move the mouse. If you want to make fine adjustments to the zoom, then you can do that by holding down the Control key and then press and hold the middle mouse button while you drag the mouse. Now we're ready to render the image, but I'm going to save the project first. It's a good idea to save your project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. So from the File menu, Select Save. Now click on the Render button that looks like a camera. For now, keep all of the default values and just press the Render button. This is a quick render that isn't rendered with very many samples, so it will look grainy, but it will give us a good idea of what we have so far. If you want to switch between this rendered image and the previous view, click on this menu down here. If you select 3D View, it will take you back to the previous view. To return to the rendered image, select UV Image Editor. Well, everything looks good with this image, so we're ready to render the final image with more samples. So come down here and open the section called Sampling. In some older versions of Blender, this section is called Integrator. The number of render samples is currently set to 10. I'm going to change this to 500. The larger this number is, the better the final image will look, but the longer it will take to render. Now to render the final image, come back up here and click on the Render button. If you want to abort the rendering before it's finished, then just press the Escape key. This image is going to take a while to render, so I'm going to pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished, and now we have our final image. To save the image, Make sure that your cursor is over the image and press the F3 key. Specify a directory here and a file name here. I'm going to name this image poolballs.png. Then press the Save as Image button. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.